Hello, welcome to Block Switch. I'm Roger Williams. I'm the team rector of this parish. And we're just going to make a bit of a film and try and present ourselves, what we do, what we hope to do, and uh, see if maybe you could come and join us and be team, uh, team vicar here. So uh, it's a team parish of four churches, or you could say three and a half. I'm standing outside All Saints here, which is the old sort of parish church, as you can see, standing on the high street. Um, but actually the team vicar's responsibility would particularly be to take care of the north of Bloxwich where we've got two churches, St Thomas's Mosley and Holy Ascension Lower Farm, which are churches that were built on big housing estates that grew up uh, in the 50s and 60s and the churches were built at the same time, multi-church, multi-purpose churches uh, that are used on Sundays for worship but in lots of other ways through the week as hubs for the community. Um, and we're looking for somebody to, to take care of those two churches and also to come down here when it might be weddings or funerals or something, share in the uh, pastoral ministry of the parish in that way, which is normally based here. So there's quite a lot to do, but I think it uh, can be a really good job, uh, one that has got plenty of challenge, but also plenty of support built into it. I'll tell you briefly about the fourth church, which is St James's Church or really we now call it Blockswitch Youth Church. We tried to relaunch it uh, specifically as a youth church about three years ago. And actually the kids that we drew uh, were being so badly behaved to the neighbors that we've had to curtail that project. I hope we can get back to it more or maybe find a slightly different direction for the building there. So currently we don't use that one on Sundays and we don't have a congregation there, but we uh, have uh, rented out to two different churches Sunday morning and afternoon. As well as the four churches, we've also got a couple of schools, Church of England schools, uh, one attached to here, but one called Little Blockswitch that's attached to Holy Ascension Church, uh, and a lot of other schools. I think there's 11 schools in Blockswitch Parish altogether, uh, and we've got contact with a good number of them, most of them. So, it is a team parish of churches. It's also got, I think, quite a nice, uh, well, I think certainly find it a nice team of people uh, who are the ministers of the parish and we meet on Wednesday lunchtimes as a team and uh, obviously the team vicar's post and my own. Then there's Trish Nesbitt, she's an ordained local minister. She comes from St Thomas's originally, but works around the whole parish now. Uh, readers, there's three readers and another one in training. Um, there's a family worker post which is half time and uh, Julie who does that actually has gone on to maternity leave and Trish in fact is um, covering the maternity leave. Um, and then another post, Jana, who's um, doing a youth work and theology degree uh, with us as a placement, but it's a placement based degree. She's here most of the time, offering us quite a lot of time uh, for youth work, so that's very good as well. So I feel it's a good team uh, of people and wider than that in the church wardens and all the members of the churches uh, and plenty of support, uh, but we're really looking for the right person to come. Maybe it could be you. Uh, let us know if you want to find out a bit more and, um, and strengthen and extend our team and see if we can't do new things in the future. We've got some exciting special moment, I think, in both St Thomas's and Holy Ascension and we need the right person to seize the moment. Well, this is St Thomas's Church, Mossley, and it's one of the churches in our team here in Blockswich. I think it's the only hub for the Mosley estate right now, really, because uh, the pubs are both closed, the youth centre's closed. This probably is truly the only public space left. And, uh, and it is very much got that feel about it. I'd call this a real community church. And I think everybody knows it and comes in for fairs and events and bits and pieces. Uh, and it's nice. And the Mosley itself is uh, a big... Um, housing estate, originally social housing. Now obviously quite a lot of the homes have been uh, sold under the right to buy. Um, and I think it's a nice estate. It's got a, quite a feeling uh, of a well-defined area, a bit of a community. And the church was built at much the same time as the estate. So uh, my colleague Carlton is team vicar here and uh, he's been here about eight years but he's moving on this August. He came here from uh, the Bahamas. I have enjoyed Blockswitch very much. It's been hard work, but um, you know, little by little, I've seen improvements. And I think, in terms of the church, I have had tremendous support from the team, 
And then moving around the different churches, it's been great. I think I've, yeah, I've been well supported in an area that is not easy to minister in. <laughs> We're juggling three or four churches in their own particular needs. And each church has their little interest groups and we have to attend to those. And, you know, we, we deal with a whole lot of deprivation. You know, our churches struggle to pay its assessments, its parish shares, income is not that high. So we can't often do the things we need to do. So we have to be creative. We have to network. And it always seems as if we're moving from month to month or from one project to the other. So that sense of stability is in there all the time. But at the same time, it's quite unique in that it has a whole lot of network partners. And I think that's the key for St. Thomas. The key for St. Thomas is being in constant relationship with your scouts, the guides, with the mostly big local, with the over 50s club. It has always functioned in that way. So when it's time to promote things, fundraising efforts, um, we also have great relationships with the two schools on the estates. And these have been key certainly to my ministry. So St. Thomas is, is a good bunch. And then when it comes to the spirituality of St. Thomas, I think St. Thomas is quite unique. They're very open to different ways of being. And the, what impresses me every Easter, every um, yeah, Holy Week and Easter, St. Thomas has a range of things. And I don't have to manage it. I don't have to, you know, I just sit back and assist them. But they have some deep teachings, deep rhythms of grace, if you would, if I, I would call it that. And um, it's been a joy to, to just walk with them. Um, I first started helping out in the uh, fates, the uh, Christmas fates, summer fates. And then um, all of a sudden, uh, well, three years ago, I got diagnosed with cancer. Um, which uh, then enticed me to start coming to church again. And I've been here for about, I've been up and out for about three years now. It's, uh, well, with it being located by um, the shops, uh, everyone walks past, they know the shop, uh, the church. Um, most of them uh, uh, do come in to, for some of the courses. The kids come in for the kids club, or, which you're uh, running. So, um... And then the vicarage is just next door over here. That's where Carlton's been living. And um, it's a four bedroom vicarage uh, and it's certainly very handy for the church. Uh, we've got somebody called Trish Nesbitt who lives in just the next street over there, Glastonbury Crescent. And she is from the congregation, but she's now ordained as an ordained local minister. And she's a tower of strength. I always think she's great. Uh, so she's based here in, in St. Thomas's, although she's also operating around our whole team and sharing in the ministry of the whole parish. So I believed in God as someone up there, almighty and all powerful and really disconnected with me in a, in a kind of way. So it wasn't a relational knowledge of God at all. All of that has really had a, a quick turnaround. And so now I can say that I don't just know of God, but I actually know God as a friend. And that's been the most amazing journey for me, and that really came about through the death of my son. Um, that's been 16 years ago now. Um, and it was through the then vicar here, Mal Hawksworth, who came to do the funeral visit and left a little prayer card. And it was that prayer card that started my journey. And so I started to explore um, what else there might be about this God. And so I started to come to this church and here I was like a seedling in a greenhouse and blossomed and grew. I'd sit at the back and just really soaked it all in and found myself getting stronger on the inside. And then I was asked if I'd like to read in the church and I started to read the scriptures and that really fired me up and gave me a little bit more confidence. And then I was asked to lead something else and it's been kind of a very slow 
growing time, but it's been a wonderful time and I wouldn't change it for the world. And it, that obviously came to the point where I started to think, actually God's calling me to something else. And the church itself, when I first came in, didn't feel like a church to me. It felt more like a bingo hall. Um, but actually I've grown to love this space because it's where common things happen, ordinary things happen in the same space that is occupied for worship on a Sunday. And I think there is something deeply theological and beautiful about that, really. I think it's difficult to engage the, the community with the church on a weekly basis. But when we have things like Chris Dingle or um, carols by candlelight or, or any um, church fairs or anything like that, then the community really do um, come in. Um, and I think they really cherish the building. The congregation here are warm and friendly. And in fact, from our first times coming in, I would say that they gave me space to actually cry um, without kind of overwhelming me with fuss and attention. We've got very deep connections with the school. In fact, the school is just over the way across our lawn. We've got a gate that allows the school to actually come in. The children from that school, actually, we invite them to come on a Saturday once a month to this Jump for Joy um, service that I started. Open the Book is a Bible Society initiative that churches together um, instigated in Bloxford, and that's had a, a massive impact. I can't even find a word that would describe how big and how helpful that has been um, in engaging with children over the schools. Uh, and there's another woman, Helen who's uh, currently training as a reader. I'm in training, I'm just about to start my second year training to be a licensed lay reader in the Church of England. So I've just completed my first year and about to start on my second year of my training. How's it going? The training's going very well. It's, I've learnt such a lot and the depth is totally amazing. The Old Testament was brilliant. The New Testament is far more interesting and challenging than I thought it was going to be. And of course, in the second year, we're going to be moving into all the church ethics and deep stuff that I don't know, lots of stuff that I don't know anything about. So I'm going to be learning and cramming my head full of a lot more stuff. We've got to get out there to get the people in. They're not going to come to us, we need to go to them. And to draw people in, we have a service on a Saturday that runs once a month for children. And we're all God's children. We can have children from three years old to 93 years old coming to that service. And for me, it's about spreading the word and getting connected with people. And I really think that when you do message church, such as what happens at Holy Ascension, um, that connection, I think it actually resonates with people and, and draws them in together. And so hopefully for me, it's about, well, what I do here at the Kids Club, that word goes back and we see some of these children, that they come through to the Jump for Joy service once a month. And then my, my vision is that, you know, we will fill this church. We are for the community. We're a community church for the community. So although it's a fairly small congregation, it's been able to throw up leadership and initiative. And uh, right now we've got two fairly young church wardens, Adrian and Donna, who are both in their 30s. Uh, and I think that's a good sign for us. And I hope this church is going to go really well for years to come. But we're looking for the right person to come in and make their input to it. So I would think the key here will be community ministry, being here, being known, being around. Uh, going in the shops, going around the streets, knowing a lot of people. I think if you do that, you'll find that people are quick to want to know you. Well, another interesting thing about St Thomas's right now is our partnership with the Big Local. Because the Big Local is a fund of the lottery, uh, and it's to do with the fact there's a million pounds for the Mosley Estate, a sort of regeneration budget to upgrade the Mosley Estate. And uh, St Thomas's have got very involved really, right from the beginning it was named as the so-called trusted organisation. Uh, and then the big locals trying to help us upgrade a bit here. Uh, we've got a 90,000 or 100,000 pound scheme to build disability ramp, new toilets, 
a new bigger kitchen taking out some wasted corridor space, a kind of reception counter thing which will make it really nice like a proper community centre with a welcome office, uh, an enhanced division between the church and the sanctuary uh, storage. So anyway, it's this whole scheme for probably almost £100,000 and uh, the big local so far have put in about a third of it and they're helping us on uh, gain credibility with funders for the rest of it. So um, this whole link with the big lottery I think is rather exciting in a way. We have in our building four community champions, um, four community champions who are in effect doing the work of the church the work we want to do, reaching out in the community, they are doing it for us and they're based at the church. And I think that is something we, we can't afford to let go of. But I think between the church and the big local, there'll be um, a really good opportunity to make this a more and more uh, active community centre. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how a new person can perhaps build on the legacy that's already been created. So uh, all in all, I would say uh, the Mosley's a good challenge. It's got a kind of reputation for being a rough place, but I personally think that's one of these situations where the reputation hangs on longer than the reality. But it is a place where um, there's not a lot of um, educational achievement, if you like. Uh, there's not a lot of high earners. Um, it's, it's probably an area that will change in years to come. It's just the kind of place where I think the Church of England wants to be and wants to do well. And I would say anybody could have a good time setting their face to being the parish priest of the Mosley in the first place. Well, here we are now at Holy Ascension Church. And this church stands on the Lower Farm Estate. I think it was farmland till the 60s and perhaps 70s and then was uh, built over by quite a large housing estate. And this church is from much the same time. Uh, it's probably not our best building uh, because it was donated by Barclays Bank. It was, um, uh, they had it themselves after the war as some kind of temporary building on a bomb site and then gave it to us and it was supposed to only stand for a few years. But now finally I think we are about to replace it and uh, we've got, a, we've had <laughs> such a long story but we've now got I think a very realistic drawing uh, and our plan is to um, retain the footing and the brick wall but actually the side walls and back are mostly just wooden and the roof is flat. So we're going to retain what we can as the foundations and some of the wall uh, but then uh, raise everything else into being a proper brick built building. It'll actually extend quite a lot further uh, in that direction. So that old porter cabin over there which is storage for the church right now, uh, all that footprint will become part of the church building as well and given that we're able to start from the existing building it's only going to cost us about 140 something thousand of which we're about halfway through the fundraising so far. I'm optimistic this year we've got a professional fundraiser working with us and uh, I think there's a good chance uh, that even by the end of 2017 we'll have funding in place to build the new Holy Ascension, which will be a truly sensational moment for us. I've been a member of Holy Ascension for 22 years. We'd not long moved back here into my dad's house and I was looking for a place to worship close at hand and I just happened upon it. Uh, we came once, we were made very welcome because I got a small baby at the time. It's a very welcoming place, uh, all ages are very welcome, all abilities are welcome. Um, I have an autistic grandson, he's always made very welcome here. Uh, we are trying to work towards a dementia friendly church, so hopefully we will be able to uh, accommodate people with dementia. Um, church warden fell upon me. Um, <laughs> I could say it was foisted upon me. Uh, I didn't know what to expect, but it's a lot of fun. So uh, we're looking for somebody to come as team vicar here uh, who's got that brief really to pick up initially pastorally and in every way uh, with what we have but then to be around for the building scheme 
uh, and we already know that we're going to worship in the school next door while the building work happens, that's been talked about. And, uh, and then obviously to launch the new building with um, a bit of flair hopefully, make a splash. Uh, and I think we can bring in a lot of uh, visitors, we can do all kinds of groups here. Uh, the scope for partnerships with the local authority or the health service we've been spoken about. Uh, the school next door is certainly supportive and friendly. It's not actually the Church of England school next door. This church is linked to the, a school called Little Blockswich Church of England Primary School, which is down the other end of the estate. Uh, but it's also got friendship with um, Lower Farm Primary School, the one right next door, uh, which is the one that in fact we'd use temporarily. And I wonder if we couldn't um, really do after school stuff or maybe before the end of school stuff for mums and whoever to drop in before picking the children up. I think there's a lot of scope here in all kinds of ways. Um, and actually look, uh, the Lower Farm School, something that is very nice right now is the, uh, that we're also doing the Open the Book project there. We're doing it in the Jubilee Academy linked with St Thomas's Church and we're doing it in the Lower Farm School. Uh, sending a team of people in, volunteers, lay members, uh, actually from other churches as well, uh, weekly to do a Bible story assembly there through the Open the Book material. So, all in all, I think there's an awful lot of scope right now in uh, Holy Ascension Church. The existing congregation is fun. They've uh, got a very, very strong um, family feel, I think, belonging to each other type of feel. Uh, partly because they've done so many social events uh, trying to raise money for this new building uh, that they probably have uh, just spent half their social life hanging around at um, quizzes and uh, fish and chip suppers up here. And I think they are a, a church with a, a strong cohesive identity. Um, I certainly like to see uh, some new young families come into the church. It's got a few uh, young single people, but it's uh, also got a good number of older people uh, and it has got some uh, mums bringing children. I think it can strengthen as a congregation uh, and is likely to do that in the future and um, if the right person can come as team vicar I think they've got a very good opportunity indeed. They'd be very much welcomed. Uh, over the years uh, there was at one time I think a full-time team vicar based here then there was a half-time team vicar then even that post came to an end. Uh, Carlton has been uh, acting recently as team vicar both of this church and of St Thomas's Church, which is fine. Um, but maybe people here feel that he took it on as a kind of add-on uh, and he lives at St Thomas's and he's rooted at St Thomas's. So I think as a new person comes in, uh, they'll have a proper institution service, obviously, um, at here and St Thomas's. You know automatically that you are in a different church just their comportment, just just the way they sit and listen <laughs> and absorb everything you say. Um, so they interact with leadership differently. But key to understanding Holy Ascension, I feel, is that they're a church who have been whole, carrying the burden of getting a new building for so long. I think there's a, there's a note of tiredness there. But saying that, there are a whole lot of people who do a lot. <laughs> they might not see it, but the people at Holy Ascension, I, they are, they are so self-sufficient. <laughs> they get so much done with very little and they work together in a way that I don't quite see anywhere else. So whilst at St. Thomas, I might be fighting just to get one simple thing done. At Holy Ascension, it's not a problem. It's done before I even have a chance to blink. <laughs> so, all in all, I think it's uh, exciting up here at Holy Ascension. And I think um, it's a kind of a funny old place now, lying on a port cabin for storage, another port cabin for Sunday school. Um, but there is the vicarage uh, here as well. Right now that's been lent to another parish for their curate's house. But, uh, but I think there's a, a, a big and good opportunity here uh, to build up and to strengthen the work uh, and at the same time to be part of the parish-wide team 
down at All Saints on Blockswich High Street is where we mostly do weddings and all those things. Uh, and the person would have to play a part in that as well. Uh, and that's nice, get some outlet for all that ministry. But here I think it would be more based in uh, the congregation and in perhaps uh, innovative mission through the schools or through the district. <laughs> what kind of colleague do we need? Firstly, I would say someone full of faith, deeply rooted in God, which all um, colleagues and vicars should be, but that there's, a, there's an element of that that I really would look for, someone that I can see as a deep, spir deeply spiritual, rooted in Jesus kind of person. I think it would have to be someone who has a real calling to make a difference in a place because it's not the most attractive of areas when you have other rural um, parishes to look at. Um, we, I think we would need someone full of enthusiasm as well as faith, as well as, as faith energy, um, someone who would work well with a team because we are a team ministry and we have a very good relationship. I've, I've never had any problems with our team here. It's a, it's a wonderful team, very supportive and encouraging. Just to be here and be a presence because we find that we do a lot of do-it-yourself services and, and the congregation really do appreciate the presence of a vicar. We need a team vicar who is enthusiastic, who connects with people and is prepared to, to go out and mix with people. We need someone who's passionate about children, passionate about families and passionate about God because God's everywhere. He's in the centre of everything we do and that's what we want. You need somebody who is open with who they are. I think Blockswitch is very sensitive to personalities. And I, I think if they sense that somebody cares, but not just care, but is, is human, <laughs> just open to them and decent and, and godly. God, let's not forget the God part. <laughs> the God part is important, the spirituality. And I know it's not going to be easy, but I do know it's worth it. It's worth it. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed watching the film. Uh, it may or may not be the best film ever, but at least it's hopefully given you some glimpse of who we are, of Block Switch and of uh, some of the opportunities that we have. I've really enjoyed my own time in Blockswitch. Uh, I like it because it's just uh, a nice town to belong to. I feel that. It's much the most settled community that I've ever lived in, with parents and grandparents and children and grandchildren all still living in the town. And uh, of course, it's uh, a bit post-industrial, a bit run down in some respects, uh, but actually, uh, it's a town where I felt very much at home and been pleased to be here. Uh, we're looking for somebody to come who's just got some fire for the Lord, some care for people, vision for the task, determination to carry it through. If that could be you, then why don't you think about coming? We'd love to hear from you. You're really welcome to phone me or email me if I can discuss it with you a bit further and uh, think about applying. Whether or not it ends up in Block Switch, may God bless you in all that you do.